Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Breaker SC2. I guess you could call this um, a little bit of a resumption in my casting. But I guess I'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, for now, at the 12 o'clock position of Vani Research Station, it is our barcode. <clears throat> and at the 6 o'clock position, spawning is our blue Terran. He is Boreal Legend. Now, I haven't actually gotten a preview of what this replay in peculiar has to offer but uh tvp it's been a long time since i've casted it and this is a masters versus gm level level replay if you will and i think that's one thing that i'm enjoying so much about it from a caster's perspective it's something that i haven't had a whole lot of exposure to in such a long long time now talking about the map obviously it's ultra 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 wide open um, many bases, many potential expansions are more exposed than a streaker at a nudist colony. I know I need to work that out of my vocabulary, per se. Because it seems as though every time I cast, I'm using exposed or naked or... <laughs> One thing that becomes peculiar to my vocabulary would be like a streaker at a nudist colony. So there we go. We got the 12 barracks going down. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see a reaper expand... Or maybe a second barracks following it up. But given the fact that we don't have a gas just yet, I'm leaning towards saying we're going to see Legend going with potentially a refinery follow-up. Or maybe even a second barracks <clears throat> before throwing down the expansion. That's typically the safest thing to do because, of course, the one thing that's ultra annoying, but I wouldn't say necessarily viable on this map, is a Mothership Core Zealot Stalker Rush. That can kill potentially 10 SCVs in the early game, but there is a wall off at the ramp leading into the main for Legends, so let's try not to worry too much about that. For the time being, Legends gets an SCV at his opponent, and our barcode is just saying, come at me, bro. Come at me. Back at home. Ooh, double gas. Well, that is indicative of a tech up, to say the very least. All right. Cybernetics core going down. Very normal so far coming from our barcode. Upgrade complete. So here we go. Double refineries are just now finishing up. We're going to see more SCVs getting put on the gas, I imagine. But there's only eight SCVs and, of course, the occasional mule to hit the mineral line. Ooh, that is ultra annoying. Now I'm wondering... Okay. I'm really wondering what is up Legend's sleeve. Now that he's got this going for him. He's got the block on his opponent's natural expansion. At least the one that's tucked away in, I guess you'd say, the more safe of the two locations. Taking an expansion here, I think I could see some Hellions coming in there and just absolutely wrecking face. And we do have the factory on the way right now. There's going to be a reactor on that barracks. And that basically, I imagine, means we'll see the barracks swapped out with the factory. If not, a few more marines are going to be cranked out first. Maybe once the factory is done, we'll see a starport, and I could just see all kinds of jimmies being rustled using medevac drops, aliens, and marines. Right now at the natural, we do see, of course, our barcode Protoss was forced to crank out one zealot. He's going to go for a follow-up stalker, very standard. And with that being said, this is going to be dealt with eventually. It's just it, it it's really a hassle to deal with if you are a Protoss. Please note that I was not saying it would actually be a law of the land that he would take this for his expansion. Although I think it could, in many ways, be interpreted as a death sentence if he did in fact go for it. We do have a Robo on the way right now. Did just finish up, and wow, that is a very very fast robotics bay. We've got a handful of Marines out on the map. Interesting to note that we've got a few Hellions following them as well, and this one Zealot is going to come across those Marines. Not going to do too much damage. Get one Marine down to orange HP. Just ah. Well, this this really speaks to the defense that our Red Protoss must make right now. If it's one thing that's working for him at this moment, the Natural Nexus is not complete. He can activate a Nexus Cannon here if need be, and then buy himself some more time to get units out on the map. But more and more Marines and Hellions are making their way across the map. The first Banshee is on its way, as well as Cloak. But we're about to have... Oh, whoa, whoa, an Immortal. But I, I don't see an Observer anywhere. And this is the beauty of a single Stalker. 
It can kite an infinite number of marines if kite, if doing it correctly. That one hellion is basically able to keep up on attack range, however, and so there's no kiting whatsoever for that hellion. Marines pull back for the most part. And I'm wondering where on earth is our first banshee. It's just now finishing up. And it's going to be nothing but tanks. This is all off of one base, I might add, coming from Legend. That means if he's not able to actually do an amount of game-ending damage here, or at least get 12 workers killed, I'd say, bare minimum, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Speaking of workers, we actually have none coming from our barcode at this moment, which means I imagine he knows exactly what is coming at him and what he needs to do to be able to hold on. We do, of course, have one immortal. We do, of course, also have a warp prism, and the first Colossus is on its way. Probes being cranked out are going to go into the main. Both of those stalkers still alive. One of them with five kills as a mentor, another one with three as a disciple. Mothership Corps is going to come in and help finish them off, and it looks like, for the most part, this should be dealt with, but where on earth? There's no observer yet? That is quite painful. There's no detection here whatsoever, and now it looks like the one thing that Legend's been looking for this entire game, he will finally have a piece of. I'm a little bit surprised that he doesn't try to go for the Colossus kill himself, because that reduces his opponent's ability to crank out. Uh, oh, I like this, this micro trick, though. Very nice. Oh my god. Hold on. That is a lot of injured probes. But altogether, nine were killed. I'd say this is a combat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. SCVs were pulled there. What What did I just miss? Oh my god. Well, um. Second Banshee has arrived as well, I might add. And now it's going to be Stalkers and a Colossus versus all these SCVs, a Siege Tank, and a handful of Marines. Those Stalkers are getting teleported around. He says, no blink, no matter. I got this. And that got cleaned up almost completely. Now the question is, where does Legend go from here? Is it 16 workers? To his opponent's 22. That's still compatible, but I mean, well, I, let's look at the army supply. Yeah, we've got kind of even-ish army, but I feel as though he doesn't have the right composition to combat what his opponent is throwing at him. That Banshee coming back now, there's no Warp Prism Micro. The Observer is nowhere to be seen. Mothership Core, the Nexus Cannon's gone. There's now a Stalker being warped in too, actually, to deal with this one Banshee threat back at home, and it looks like it should be dealt with eventually. It may cost him more Stalkers than he wants to. That's two lost to the cause already. And now Legend is defending his front door successfully using Siege Tank. This is one of the craziest ban one of the craziest games I've seen in a long time. Oh man, <laughs> ten kills on that Sergeant Banshee now pulling back, checking out the natural, seeing if there's anything to kill there. And I feel like this is kind of anyone's game at this moment. It, it's going to tip in favor of Legend if we can see that natural expansion get up and running. I'm loving the Colossus drops here, I might add. And he's continuing to do whatever damage he can. That one Colossus is still alive. But Extended Thermal Lance is nowhere to be seen just yet. <coughs> Putting a delay <coughs> on this command center will help immensely. And finally he pulls out. Oh, I'm loving this! Oh my god, the splash damage is amazing. This is this is both players at each other's throats at its finest, and that one Colossus is saved. Saved. It looks like we lost track of that Banshee, perhaps? Yes? No, those Banshees are still doing work, and there's only two Stalkers here to deal with this. Oh man, two Stalkers versus two Banshees. Well, it goes without saying who wins that fight, but the Nexus Cannon comes into play. One of them gets knocked out of the sky. And that's going to make Legends Day a little bit more difficult. At least in keeping his opponent's worker count low. Who's got the advantage here? Typically, whenever you've got players on even workers, or even in some situations when you see Terran lower on workers than Protoss, Terran can still be at an advantage. It's all dependent on upgrades. It's all dependent on tech. It's all dependent on mules. Where is the energy on those orbital commands going? Are they going to cranking out mules, supply drops, or are they going into scans? That's the real question. Immortal Count's going to continue to grow, but I do want to also add that Legend at this point hasn't given us like a definitive expression of tech up. Right now he's got, I'd say, kind of a weird-ish, it's obviously a cheesy-ish build going for him. 
but it doesn't scream bio, it doesn't scream mech at this moment. There's no stim, there's no multiple factories, we've still got banshees on the way, we've still got tanks on the way, things like that. Twilight Council is now on the way for our stalkers as well, and it looks like that cybernetic score which was under attack has just been thoroughly saved. But now we've got him barging into his opponent's main expansion. Colossus looks like it could be knocked out very soon. One Immortal being exchanged for, let's see here, one tank, and now that one Colossus is gone. Mothership Core is in a bit of danger. He's going to have to save that. He needs it. He needs to have that Mothership. <coughs> and it is saved at the last moment. Apologies for the anticlimactic cough, but he holds on. And beyond that, we actually have him progressing further up the tech tree. The only real difference, I'd say the only way our players are even at this moment is in the way of upgrades. They're both at 0-0, zero, zero, and now it looks like the decision to tech up has been made by Legend, and it's something that isn't necessarily all that <coughs> orthodox, or even feasible in many regards. It's going to be Mech versus Terran. This isn't the beginning of Heart of the Swarm anymore, guys. But, there we go. Cannon going down at the natural. How many workers have been killed thus far? 24! 25 by legend. That cannon at the natural will be finishing up. And that takes care of just about any Banshee threats. Now there's going to be a Templar Archives accompanying charge lots. I'm thinking Zealot Archon versus what is going to be pre predominantly mech. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see how that pans out. Banshees will now be regrouping. One of them is going to be completely pooped out of energy, and that means no more cloak. Alright. So now I mean marines coming into this composition are essentially just going to be, I wouldn't say cannon fodder, but more or less meat shielding, if you will. Which is an acceptable choice given that they have no upgrades. They don't even have stim, which is a very seldom seen phenomenon in TVP. That Banshee still doing work. Two stalkers versus a Banshee. Well, I think we know who wins that. At least straight up, head on, one versus one. And the Banshees came in to get their scouting, if you will, and they saw exactly what they need to see. It's going to be Charge Lot Archon, given what Legend has scouted from his opponent. And I love the decision to go for an earlier third from our Protoss as, well, I mean, the third is here, but <clears throat> it hasn't been landed yet, coming from Legend. I'd say the one thing that's really working against him at this moment is that his, his own main expansion is going to go dry faster than his opponents. Loving this drop right here, the splash damage is looking like it's going to take down one tank in exchange for a couple of stalkers, not too bad. And I love the warp ins here to cause more splash damage. This is some crazy stuff. This is a Masters versus GM level game. On North America, I, I think? I think? It's hard to say. I don't know, I got this from Drop.sc, but now all the probes from the main are being transferred to the natural. The, many of them will be distance mining for a while, but look at that storm drop! Oh my god! So many red HP lings, or excuse me, red HP SCVs. But, wait a minute, did I just, did I miss that? Did I miss that? We just, let's go back a little bit. Did the war prison get shut out of the sky? Let's try that again. Hold on. Here we go. Oh my god! That's a very low, oh, 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 man, he's not gonna get the second one out. That is a little bit poopy, but it's all right. It's all right. Both players are amazingly even in supply at this moment. Workers killed. Again, still in favor of Legend. He's going to throw down another scan to figure out where his opponent is. And look at the positioning of these tanks. That's not helping too much. He does see that there's a natural, ex the natural expansion has been taken. Banshee's finally gone. He sees a bunch of Hellions at this point. And now he's getting chased down back home. These are a bunch of stalkers that he wishes he would have had earlier. Because now this is going to make the defense much more difficult back at home. He's got 29 supply and dropping to his opponents. 47. 
This could be the tipping point of the game. We're about to find out. Archons, Immortals coming into the mix. I don't know. I think if it's one thing that could take this composition down, it would be Archons and Immortals. As well as Charge Lots. Those are very important too. Don't forget about that. But finally, we have plus one attacks on the way at 20 minutes into the game from Legend. And the longer this goes on, I feel like it could be a game that scales further and further out of favor of Legend. I feel like perhaps, just perhaps, one of the moments where he had the opportunity to do the most damage has just slipped his grasp. But then again, if he had fought this head-on, I feel like he just would have been crushed. I, it's, it's just hard to say. There's no easy answer to where Legend would have won. It's not over yet, though. We can give him the benefit of the doubt. Both players are even in supply. I've seen... I've seen Protoss players in many ways kind of... I guess you could say throw games versus Terrans that do mech. And fun fact of the day, Immortals, yes, they have hardened shields, which means any attacks that go at them do only 10 damage. But, Widow Mines, get past that. Nexus Cannon coming into the main, Photon Cannons as well. There's... Virtually no economic damage done here by our Terran. <clears throat> As we progress further, the question is, what is the tech up to be made now by our barcode Protoss? He does have, of course, double Robos, which means he has the ability to crank out double um, Immortals or double Colossus should he need them. But given the fact that he's already got High Templar, Archons, Charge Lots, I feel as though he's got everything he needs in the way of AoE. And now he is perched and ready to attack. There is a motion sensor tower. I love the cannon going down next to this reinforcing pylon. And the Charge Lots are just really going to rustle some jimmies. Here they go! They're getting ready to... Go back home. Hum. Scan going down his army will reveal it for the most part. And it looks like Barcode's going to let his army supply get just a little bit bigger before charging in there. And I love the positioning, the last minute positioning of this command center. It's amazing. There's Hunter Seeker missiles going down on a bunch of Immortals. One of them will connect. Two of them will connect. Storm's going down on top of all of the tanks. Archon's going forward with the charge lots to take this down. The Planetary Fortress did not finish in time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Breaker SC2. I will see you guys next time.